Politicians in Japan don't have much time before the campaign for a general election comes to a close. Voters will cast ballots on Sunday to choose lawmakers for the lower house. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his Liberal Democratic Party try to frame this poll as a referendum on his economic policy known as Abenomics. Our special coverage, Japan Decides, has focused on the key issues all week. Rebuilding the Northeast is certainly top of mind for many voters. The 2011 earthquake and tsunami ravaged the coastline, changing the lives of people in three prefectures. But people in Fukushima face more complex problems with the fallout from the nuclear plant accident. Nearly four years on, there has been progress, but for some uh, people, it ha isn't happening fast enough. And HK World's Corando Tago reports. Much of the area around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is still an evacuation zone. High levels of radiation have made it unlivable. Government leaders are trying to keep up the pace of decontamination work so residents can one day go home. But many feel time is dragging on. I don't want the government to slow down. Reconstruction needs to continue steadily. I know government officials are trying hard, but it's not enough. Radiation released from the damaged plant affected large swaths of land once used to produce an abundance of rice, vegetables, and fruit. Some farmers have been able to restart their work following decontamination, and their crops have cleared government standards for radiation levels. But field after field still needs to be cleaned up. Production in Fukushima was about $2 billion a year before the accident. And while there has been some progress, what they bring in now remains about 13% lower than it was in 2010. Fishing industry workers are in a similar bind. What they can catch must be screened for radiation. They stopped fishing soon after the accident. A little more than a year later, they were back in the ocean. They could bring in three species from waters 50 kilometers north of the nuclear plant. They gradually expanded the area. Now they can go almost everywhere except close to the damaged facility. And they can catch 56 species. But they are still concerned. We definitely want to see the nuclear accident and the radioactive wastewater leaks settled quickly. We can't do business if those problems aren't tackled first and thoroughly. The government and plant operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, know that. They are trying to stop contaminated water from leaking from the plant. And workers are cleaning up the site itself. But a decades-long work decommissioning effort is already behind schedule. Politicians say there will be no revival of Japan without Fukushima's reconstruction, and voters are certain to hold them to their words. Grand Otago, NHK World. Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been struggling to decommission the reactors that were crippled in the 2011 disaster. But before they start dismantling the structure, they must first deal with radioactive contaminated groundwater. The head of Japan's nuclear watchdog has visited the plant to see firsthand what the workers are up against. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi has more. The chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority on Friday made his third visit to the crippled plant. Shunichi Tanaka gave the workers a much-needed pep talk. There are still a lot of potential risks associated with Fukushima Daiichi. I want you to tackle each problem in a way that local residents and other people around the country can see progress. Tanaka saw tanks storing contaminated water. 
He then went inside the turbine building to see the contaminated water. Since the accident three years ago, highly contaminated water has been flowing into a maze of tunnels from the damaged reactors and turbine buildings. Experts believe it's mixing with groundwater and then seeping into the ocean. Workers initially hoped to build a wall of ice to block the contaminated water. They then planned to pump out all the water, but the plan failed. So plant officials decided to adopt a new method, using cement. Workers have started pouring cement into tunnels and pumping out the contaminated water. Tanaka observed their efforts. Removing the contaminated water from the tunnels has been our top concern for more than a year. Now we finally see that progress is being made toward completing the work. Typical workers plan to finish removing the contaminated water from the tunnels by March. Tanaka said the regulators will keep an eye on the utilities' work to ensure the decommissioning is carried out safely. A major Japanese newspaper are reprimanding more employees. The Asahi Shimbun ran an article about the handling of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. The newspaper announced it will suspend or cut the salaries of six staff because of what it calls misreporting. The editors and reporters worked on an exclusive report the paper printed in May. They detailed the steps taken by the nuclear plant manager after the accident based on his testimony. They wrote 90% of the workers defied Masao Yoshida's orders and fled the damaged plant. In September, the paper's president, Tadakazu Kimura, announced he was retracting the article. He said the journal judged the report erroneous. Kimura later announced he will step down in December along with, four, uh, uh, with other four executives, to take responsibility. Asahi's executive editor issued a statement saying the firm takes the matter seriously and will do its utmost to regain Korean people's leaders trust. Leaders have blocked imports of seafood from some prefectures of Japan for over a year. Now the South Korean government is sending a group of experts to see whether the ban should continue. Officials at Japan's fisheries ministry say the seven experts will arrive on Monday and leave Four days later, officials in Seoul decided last year to ban fisheries imports from Fukushima and seven other prefectures. They cited concerns over radioactive contamination from the 2011 disaster at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The experts will see how workers at the plant are dealing with contaminated water, and they'll observe test fishing in waters off Fukushima. The experts will visit Japan again next month. They'll conduct a survey and then write a report on whether the ban should stay in place. Japanese officials have been urging their South Korean counterparts to end the ban. They say it lacks 
scientific evidence. Authorities have also been struggling to find a place to store all the radioactive debris from the nuclear accident. Now they're one step closer after leaders of one Fukushima town approved a plan to build intermediate storage facilities there. Japan's government wants to store the debris near the damaged nuclear plant. They've earmarked a 16 square kilometer site in the towns of Okuma and Futaba. Members of the Okuma Town Assembly have voted to accept the plan. They said they had no choice if they wanted to speed up reconstruction from the disaster. I think it's time we came to a decision about this town. There is no choice but to accept the plan. They're not going to be able to take the waste anywhere else. I think the government has to take care of the landowners. They didn't want to give up their land. The government still needs Futaba officials to give the green light and they need the approval of the land's and owners. Something to add to their to-do list this weekend. They'll be voting in a general election. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his Liberal Democratic Party returned to power less than two years ago. But he called the snap poll because he says he wants voters to weigh in on his economic policy known as Abenomics. Our special coverage, Japan Decides, is focusing on the key issues ahead of Election Day. Abe enacted a last-minute bill on regional revitalization before he dissolved the lower house. Lawmakers in Japan have long been searching for a way to solve Japan's demographic dilemma. The population is aging and shrinking, and the crisis is hitting rural areas the hardest. Many voters there are looking for the change that the election may bring. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. Farmers in the western prefecture of Wakayama are known as the top producers of various kinds of fruit, but their industry is shrinking. I don't have young ones to take over my business, so my wife and I are the only ones to do the harvest. Farmers in Arida City in Wakayama have been growing oranges for hundreds of years. But 40 percent of the farmers here are now over 65, and many more are quitting. That's just one of the issues affecting this population. More than one million people used to live in the prefecture. Over the past decade, the population has decreased by 7 percent. Deaths are outpacing births, and the young people are moving to cities. Farmers who are carrying on say their income has become unstable, mainly because fruit consumption nationwide is decreasing. They can no longer rely on the domestic market. In order to survive, they're trying to increase their sales overseas. Ten years ago, they began targeting Asia's emerging economies. They started exporting processed orange products to China, Singapore and Malaysia. Sales of Wakayama oranges overseas are still small. Farmers are trying to boost their profile by getting involved in events like trade expos. If we plan many things and are able to expand our business, I have a strong feeling the younger generation will get interested in this industry. If we succeed, it will bring life to the whole community. But there's only so much farmers can do by themselves. Many residents say the new government should face the reality happening in rural areas and offer more support. I hear leaders talking about decentralizing, but all in all, all the benefits have gone to Tokyo and other cities. They have to have a solid vision to reverse this trend for real. I hope the government carries out policies for all farmers to have bright prospects for the future. Other rural communities are facing a similar problem. They want the new government to come up with silver bullet policies to change the fates of the communities and their industries.